And we know we have to chant on goodwill, compassion, empathetic joy, and equanimity. It's good to think of these qualities as a set. All too often people will focus on one at the expense of the others, the goodwill or equanimity. Actually, compassion and empathetic joy are applications of goodwill, so it comes down to two. You have to think of them together, because equanimity without goodwill becomes indifference. You just don't care about anybody. You start not caring about anything at all. Goodwill without equanimity causes you to suffer, because you look at the world. How many people are behaving in ways that will actually lead to happiness? We want all beings to be happy, but they can't simply be made happy by our wish. And it gets frustrating, because you know that the only way they're going to be happy is for them to behave in skillful ways. And there seems to be a real race right now. How many skillful people do you see? Very little. The race is towards the unskillful side. How many people can say the most outrageous things, the most harmful things, do the most harmful things? I was reading that the magnetic field of the earth is behaving in very strange ways. Maybe it's stirring up people's consciousness. Who knows? But you look at the world and it's pretty discouraging. And if you don't have any equanimity, you're going to suffer. But it begins with yourself, to have some goodwill for yourself and some equanimity together. Here again, if it's just equanimity, you see things arising and passing away and nothing much happens. As the Buddha said, if you practice with only equanimity, nothing goes anywhere. He compares it to a goldsmith. A goldsmith actually has three duties. One is to put the gold into the fire, get it heated up so it melts. But then you take it out to blow off the impurities. And then you look at it to see what still needs to be done. Putting it into the fire is effort. Blowing on it is getting the mind into concentration. And equanimity is watching. And as the Buddha said, the goldsmith simply watches the gold. Nothing happens. Can't make it in anything. So in this case, the concentration and the effort are actually an expression of goodwill for yourself. Think about that. Sometimes we think about the effort that goes into meditation as a harsh taskmaster. But it's how you show goodwill. Because after all, we all want happiness. Happiness, though, has to come from goodness. And your mind is sending out bad causes in terms of unskillful thoughts. Where are you going to get the happiness? If you really have good will for yourself, you put in the effort. If unskillful cause, unskillful mental states haven't yet arisen, you do what you can to prevent them. If they have arisen, you try to abandon them. As for skillful states, if they're not there yet, you try to give rise to them. And once they're there, you try to develop them. That's showing good will for yourself. And of course. Right effort connects to right mindfulness, and the right mindfulness leads you into right concentration. So it's all an expression of goodwill. You really want your true happiness, and you're looking at the causes. If your true happiness depends on everybody else being happy out there, it's not going to happen. If you're going to wait for somebody else to make you happy, it happens sometimes. But it's not nearly as deep as the happiness that you can create for yourself. As for the equanimity, that's simply there to watch what's going on. But you don't simply watch. You watch for the purpose of figuring out what needs to be done, what doesn't need to be done. It's in this way that these Brahma-viharas, when they're applied to you, and the meditation right now, work together. And then when you have practice in 
learning how to balance these things inside, then you can extend them out. Because goodwill is not like dedicating merit. With dedicating merit, you dedicate and you're done. You've made the merit, and it's up to other beings to express admiration, express, express their appreciation or approval. But once you've made the dedication, that's it. With goodwill, though, you have to ask yourself, what can I do that would actually contribute to this person's happiness? And it's not the case that you will be willing to do anything at all that will make the person happy. You have to think about what's a skillful thing to make this person happy in terms of long-term welfare, long-term benefit. That requires a lot of thought. But it's useful thought, because all too often there's that idea that if you're expressing loving kindness to others, you're nice to them, you do whatever they want, please them. But sometimes the things that would please them are not for their own good. And if they're going to cause you harm, you have to draw the line. Ideally, if you can get people to behave in skillful ways, that's for their long-term benefit and long-term welfare. As I would have said, one way to benefit other people is to get them to observe the precepts, or get them to see that whatever passion, aversion, or delusion they have in their minds is something to be abandoned. And you're happy to help in whatever way leads in that direction. That's a genuine expression of goodwill. But when you see that it can't happen, that's when you bring in the equanimity. Because we can have goodwill for everybody, and it can be limitless. It's as if you have a printing press and you're free to print as much money as you want. The Buddha does talk about goodwill as a form of wealth, but he talks about all the Brahma Viharas as a form of wealth. So the question comes down to when you're actually acting in the world, when you want to be generous, when you be helpful to other people. You have limitations on your energy. There may be no limitations on your goodwill, but your energy does have its limits. That's when you have to figure out where is the best place to apply that energy. And you have to have equanimity about everything else. So when you're practicing on your own, it is an expression of all of the Brahma Viharas, when you do it right. When you're dealing with other people, it's an expression of the Brahma Viharas. That's when the practice begins, becomes seamless. And when you're practicing on your own, remind yourself it's not just for you. Remember that image of the acrobats that the Buddha gives. When acrobat standing on the shoulders of the other acrobat. And the one below says, Okay, you look out after me and I'll look out after you, and that way we'll come down safely. They're standing on the end of a bamboo pole. And the one on the top says, No, that's not going to work. I have to look after myself, you look after yourself, and that way we protect each other. As the Buddha said, in that case the one standing on top is right. by training your mind, by keeping it in the principles of right mindfulness. You are providing protection to others because you're keeping your mind in safe bounds. You're keeping your balance. When you do that, it's a lot easier for other people to maintain their balance. At the same time as you deal with other people, it should be good for you too. At the very least, you, you develop in your kindness, you develop your goodwill, you develop your endurance and equanimity. Because after all, dealing with other people is not always easy. But as your endurance grows, okay, that's your strength. So try to practice in such a way that it is good for you and good for the people around you. 
really is a genuine expression of all the Brahma Viharas. Because when they're balanced and put together in the right way, it's a kind of goodness that spreads all around. <laughs>